Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. It's Friday the 4th of October and I wanted to do a quick energy check-in because there's some things which um, I feel are worth sharing. Now, we've obviously got this solar eclipse now behind us, um, but that doesn't mean that the influence and impact of its energy is also behind us because, you know, when we're dealing with an eclipse, the effects can actually last for up to six months, but they're certainly still incredibly highly charged and potent in the days after the event. Um, so, you know, we are still very much in this time when things can happen really suddenly. There can be sudden and dramatic shifts and um, turns of direction, you know, events that you didn't necessarily see coming. So be mindful of that. And obviously, because we're working with Libra, which was the recent solar eclipse, um, you know, this is very much playing out in our relationships, but also in the way that we sort of relate to and experience the world outside of ourselves. Um, so there's a few things that have been coming for me. Certainly, um, you know, in the run up to the eclipse, I had a lot of light shone on my close relationships and how I was communicating with people, how I was relating to people. Um, a lot of emotion was coming up as well, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. And also I noticed at times a real sort of um, desire just to disconnect completely, which um, again, you know, it's always interesting to observe things like that coming up if you can obviously you know sometimes you do get completely drawn into and sucked into the emotion and that's not you know there's nothing wrong with that but if you are able to sort of pause and think hang on a minute why am I reacting like this it's often interesting if you're able to go into it and really look at where that is coming from and what it is that's triggering you and um, because it's always something that inside that is inside of yourself if you're experiencing issues in with in a relationship with someone so and um, because you know for me relationships are like mirrors to the self but the other thing I've really noticed and again it seems to be building it was particularly strong the day after the eclipse um is that there is a huge amount of shadow and darkness coming up, which again, you know, is, we expected it. This is no surprise, you know, when there is an eclipse, the, the lights are um, obscured for a time. And, you know, it gives us the opportunity to look at what might be hiding, hiding in the shadows, you know, and this is at a personal level. So if there's parts of yourself, your shadow self that you haven't wanted to look at or sort of, um, work with before they can come in really strongly and show themselves but also in the outside world and certainly you know for anyone that is following some of the news stories at the moment there is a lot of stuff coming up that is very dark in nature and you know certainly for me again it might be a reflection um of you know my what's going on for me at a personal level but when I'm looking at my social media um, sort of, you know, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, the content that is coming up on my um, feeds is of a really, really dark, shadowy nature. It's almost like, you know, we're being shown, you know, the depraved part of humanity. And there's some really, um, really difficult stories coming through in our media at this at this time. And my feeling is that is only going to increase as more comes to light. Um, so, you know, it's been really interesting because I have been really aware that it's not something that I can actually avoid. It's not something that I can switch off or turn my back on. You know, I do feel in many ways that I'm going down the same rabbit holes that I went down sort of three and a half to four years ago in many respects. Um but and I'm surprised that it's happening because, you know, I I kind of thought I've I've done all that and you know I've researched or explored all of that um i know i'm being a little bit cryptic i hope you're sort of able to follow me um but it's coming back again and it's quite insistent this time and my sort of observation is that it is more in the mainstream so more people are starting to talk about what has been going on and what is going on um so this kind of point in 
I guess this is part of the awakening in many respects, but it's becoming much more difficult to turn a blind eye to or sweep under the carpet. Um, and I'm feeling that, you know, if that's happening for me, it's going to be happening at a wider level as well. And this feels like this is really part of the awakening because there is thing there are things coming to light, certain behaviours, certain deeds um, that, you know, we might have in the past sort of thought, oh, well, you know, is that even true? But as more and more and more evidence comes to light, it's going to be really difficult to um, sort of, you know, deny it or push it away or, um, you know, to turn this blind eye. And that feels like, you know, that is definite. We are definitely in an accelerated phase of that taking place now. So, um, you know, as I've been sort of going into this more shadowy, more darker um, sort of space and being, you know, seeing stuff and hearing stuff and watching stuff, you know, a lot of the time, which I don't actually want to see or watch or hear. I've been really um, sort of reminded just to sink into that, not sort of try and escape from it and but not and not resist it. But equally, don't get completely entangled in it and enmeshed and attached. It's very much about keeping that point of stillness and holding the light. And, you know, I'm reminded that we are in Libra season still. And one of the sort of signatures of the Libra energy is to come into that state of balance where you're not being sort of swung either way, pulled in one direction or the other way. You're just able to find your centre and in that space connect with the inner peace which again you know it's hard when there's lots of stuff coming out you know a lot of it is very traumatic very emotional very shocking and um, you know there are in I feel there's going to be a lot more people talking about this so you know kind of uh, it's going to be quite difficult over the coming days and weeks to not get dragged into conversations about certain events and certain um behaviours of certain people um, and also you know what is going on in the wider world in terms of the weather and you know some of the horrendous um, you know situations in across the world but it is about really being able to hold that centre to be present to connect with that inner stillness um, and that, you know, for many of us, that is one of the most important things that we are able to do to support and to help at this time. It is about having that anchor um, or anchoring that stillness in, which then, you know, sort of ripples out and has a very hopefully calming and soothing effect um, at an energetic level on so many people who are, you know, because everything is being shaken up, we are being rattled, you know, we are being challenged, but it's about not going into that and getting sort of swept away and not drowning in the shadow at this time. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I was looking at the chart coming up. Now today it's quite interesting. Um, we have got um, a fixed star activation with Mercury and this is with a star called Algorab or Algorab in the Corvus constellation. Now um, Mercury is meeting Algorab first today and then on Sunday the sun will come round and meet Algorab as well. So we've almost got a kind of double activation going on and it's like Mercury is going to potentially, you know, be bringing forward some information with this con with this conjunction. And then the sun is going to come and shine a light on it and make it even brighter and more empowered in many ways. So when we're working with the Corvus constellation, this is the raven or the crow. Um, very sort of, um, well, for some, it's a sort of darker energy potentially. You know, if we're thinking about the raven, they also they often have associations with um, darkness, with fear. They can be viewed as, you know, some sort of omen, um, you know, connections to death and destruction, um, you know, in, in, some, in some respects. But the energy of this bird is also very much linked to prophecy and to psychic abilities and to having insight and being able to perceive what is going on. And it feels really, um, well, very apt and appropriate that we're having this fixed star activation at this time when everything else is going on. Um, so 
you know, this um, star really is giving us the ability to connect with the more multidimensional aspect of ourselves. And um, the raven or algorab is said to act as a messenger between worlds, sort of bringing information up from other dimensions, um, very much linked to keeping secrets, which again is quite interesting. Um, also has shape-shifting ability. So again, the ability to be able to sort of shift in and out of different states or different mindsets even and particularly as Libra is an air sign and this you know is activating um, a, a degree in Libra and um, very intelligent very resourceful birds and um, very powerful associated with magic with all knowing um, also you know linked to mystery and to having access to information and also wisdom kind of knowing stuff in our within from from the depths that is coming up suddenly we can see suddenly we have sort of much more insight and we can almost see what is happening or what is happening and what has been happening in the world because you know as well as coming and um, prophecy isn't always from the future it can also be from the past because obviously when we move into a more multi-dimensional state there is no linear time so it's being able to see everything all at once and with mercury here it's helping us to understand it there's new information coming through um it's also interesting you know when we are working with this star it can often um sort of trigger sudden change that really gives us um sort of a new level of awakening to our soul's wisdom but also you know this can be personal and also collective so there's some really interesting themes associated with this star and then added to that so that is today with mercury sunday with the sun we also have the moon in scorpio at this time today and tomorrow um and joining um Venus, who is also in Scorpio. So when we're working with Scorpio, you know, the energy is, can be quite deep. It can be quite dark. Scorpio is about not having any fear to go below the surface, to look at what is hidden, to go into the depths, almost to sort of shed old layers or to, to kind of be reborn because there's a real sort of, um, destruction and creation energy with Scorpio. It is deeply healing, deeply emotional, deeply intuitive and sensitive. So when the moon is here in particular, you know, we are much more in tune with things that ne we can't necessarily see or touch, but we just know to be true. And certainly with Scorp with Venus here as well, this is activating the gifts of intuition, of foresight, of insight, to be able to really connect with a much deeper, much more sensitive, much more intuitive aspect of ourselves. So again, you know, this is an interesting sort of backdrop to have. And then the other um, sort of event that I wanted to talk about is the fact that the um, asteroid Sphinx is aligning with the South Node today, both at six degrees of Libra. Now, the Sphinx um, is asteroid number 896, if you want to look it up and see where it is in your chart. Um, interesting, I hadn't come across this particular asteroid before. Um, but I have been really called to explore and learn about it over the past sort of two days. And, you know, the, the Sphinx, obviously the riddle of the Sphinx, you know, there are many different stories associated with this mythical creature. Um, in some, you know, she was a monster. She would, um, she was half part man, sort of part beast a winged creature as well and she would fly around um basically asking anybody who wanted to um pass by her a riddle and if they answered the riddle incorrectly she would eat them so you know there's a lot of fear a lot of um very obviously darkness associated with her in myth but she's also you know, in ancient Egypt, you know, she was seen as a protector, as a goddess or a, a, or some sort of deity, very much, um, you know, linked to as a guardian, guarding sacred information. And, you know, so the Sphinx in astrology is very much linked to enigma, to mystery, to riddles, to puzzles, to missing information. Um, 
to hidden knowledge, you know, the kind of sense that only those with certain level of consciousness or understanding or intelligence are able to have access to this information, you know, which keeps so many other people almost locked or hidden away or, you know, in this sort of state of not knowing the truth, not knowing what is going on. Um, so unsolved mysteries are very much sort of um, the theme of this asteroid. And as she is meeting with the South Node, it feels really, really pertinent, um, especially so close to or so um, soon in the aftermath of the eclipse as we're still in this energy. Because for me, it feels like, you know, this is a real sort of um, activation of the letting go and again you know we've seen this through the south node in libra i talked about this in my eclipse video but really it is about you know we are entering this time where any where where we have been held in this state of um ignorance where we've not been given access to information where there have been hidden mysteries hidden knowledge things that have you know we, we've not been deemed um I don't know, worthy to know or worthy to have access to, all of that is being released. And as the South Node sort of works through towards now the final degrees of Libra, as you know, it's actually going to be the early degrees because the South Node is in retrograde. But, you know, the energy is really building as the nodes sort of come to the final degrees of their transit in Libra and Aries. And with the Sphinx here at this time, it is really to me about having this information. You know, we can now ask the questions and um, the right questions and we will be given the answers we have access to the information now and um, so you know this is about mystery and knowledge and secrets that are being revealed when the time is right and it feels you know to all intents and purposes that we are stepping into this time so it's my feeling that over you know the coming days certainly over the weekend into next week and the coming months that you know we're going to see this escalation of information coming to light which you know for some is going to be really shocking and you know certainly you know when I'm speaking from my own personal experience I felt that I knew a lot already about what has been potentially going on or has been going on but it is still shocking it's not easy to listen and hear and watch and you know again if you have not been aware it's going to be even harder so again it's coming back to that sort of this is the time when you know we can't um, step out of the shadow this is part of the process it feels like a rite of passage for so many of us we have to walk through the darkness in order to get to the light but it is about holding that light as we pass through holding that signature and state of peace and harmony and balance so that we don't get sort of pulled in the wrong direction or in another direction you know which is sort of distracting us too much it's about holding the center and being the light and I found um, a quote from Alex Miller, and this is from alexasteroidastrology.com, where he um, sort of talks about the Sphinx asteroid. It said it can often indicate somebody who is really into research or, you know, a detective type of job or um, sort of calling in life, you know, someone who wants to solve the mystery. Um, but he says that often it can... Um, indicate a person or a thing that defies understanding particularly of its motivations and goals which again that really sort of struck a chord with me and um, because you know we're going through this time where so much is coming to light it is really hard to understand you know or even believe some of the stuff that is coming out and what you know how could they possibly ever have acted in that way you know <laughs> what was it all about it's so inhumane in so many cases you know and I'm not just talking about you know the Hollywood movie scene I'm also talking about um you know what is going on in other parts of the world you know where there is so much conflict so much destruction and also you know I've been seeing a lot about what is going on in America and the extreme weather and the absolute devastation that is happening over there and how that is being dealt with so you know, there is a lot coming to light and it was just really to come in and say, you know, there are some really interesting transits in the chart, which I feel are really helping to 
bring it to light. And this is something that has to happen. And it has been sort of building. It's been promised for a long time. But it doesn't mean that if you're awake and aware that it's going to necessarily be easy to navigate and move through because we all have compassion, you know, and especially as we are in this deeply sensitive time with the strong Scorpio. And obviously the sun will move into Scorpio later on in October. We are going to be more sort of in tune emotionally to what is going on around us. But also we have to be mindful that Scorpio is really healing as well. So, you know, and often we have to walk through the dark to sort of get that um, rebirth, to have that transformation, to evolve, which is ultimately part of the Scorpio signature. And, and obviously we are building up to Pluto getting ready to station direct in the final degree of Capricorn. You know, he only has a matter of minutes to move through before he leaves Capricorn for good. So again, you know, from the 12th of October onwards, um, you know, around that date, we're possibly going to see even more sort of fallen idols and, you know, people in high positions um you know, falling from grace effectively um, as, you know, anything that is not rooted in integrity is going to potentially crumble. So, you know, we are moving through um, what is a challenging time. There's no doubt about that. I expect I will be back again very soon to share kind of what I feel is coming through. But I hope that has helped you in some way. And, you know, my feeling always is, my feeling always is that if I am experiencing something, then it's unlikely that I'm the only person to be going through this. So I just wanted to really come and share some insight. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching and I will be back soon.